Welcome to the third edition of Times Techies webinar. I have my colleague Sujit John also on this webinar. We started a special tech property to celebrate the rise of technologists and how a new generation of developers are creating solutions that's enterprise grade. We meet the management of several companies often, but we thought it was time to put the spotlight on technologies, and hence we started Techies. Simply Learn. Welcome, Krishna, to the 19 years of experience in IT. Before Simply Learn, he was of Tech Unified that got acquired by a public listed company in February to reskilling and lifelong learning way before the trend government. Simply Learn began as global players in professional certification training. It is today one of the biggest players in online training and certification. Krishna was Fortune's 40 under 40 leader for three years in a row. He's also part of the Economic Times 40 under 40 business leader. Without much ado, to you, Krishna. So thanks, Shilpa. In, in between, I was not able Krishna, to hear, can you it, hear us. So I want to make sure that it is it is not my problem. Can you hear okay. me clearly? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I yeah. 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 Okay. I thought I also had some problem with Shilpa. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Shilpa and Sujit, for having me here. I really appreciate um, you calling me to speak to uh, your audience. And first of all, let me congratulate you for this new uh, property called Time Stickies. I think this is really a great, uh, well thought. Um, and something that, that should have been done long back. Most of the news coverage that we see in media is all about uh, companies and their management team. I think very little was being spoken and written about uh, the people who really make uh, things happen. And especially living in Bangalore, we are all surrounded by uh, tech, um, techies all around, your neighbors, your friends, everybody is a techie. So it's, it's indeed a great initiative to um, uh, see this uh, page every Wednesday. In fact, I personally look forward to uh, seeing what's covered in uh, every Wednesday at uh, Tech Techies, and I'm sure a lot of people are uh, uh, doing the same. Thanks a lot, Krishna. Thank you. So, so um, uh, Shilpa, uh, thanks for the great introduction. So uh, I know today's topic is about gig economy, and a lot of uh, people are uh, quite interested in knowing about how they can do something, how, how can they part of that uh, new revolution that is taking place all around us. I have been with the, with the, I have the first-hand experience of experiencing that, and um, making use of um, this channel to do a lot of work. In fact, when I started Simply Learn, first one year of my entire operation was uh, handled by people that I had never met, never seen. And they're all around uh, on internet. And this I'm talking about something that I did 10 years back. So very, very excited to talk, to talk about the trends that I see and, and, and some, of the th some of the ideas that I have if someone, is, someone wants to be part of uh, this industry. So I have a small uh, presentation that I want to uh, run by um, to the audience uh, that captures most of my thought. And um, I would like to make it more and more interactive. So I urge our audience that while um, if you have any kind of questions related to gig economy and in general about uh, how can you get uh, associated with that industry? Is it good for you or not? What roles are important? What, what uh, traits are important and so on? Please feel, feel free to write it on the chat window and more than happy to answer if I can. So I'll just start with my deck. Can you all see my presentation? Yeah, yeah, Krishna. So let me just uh, uh, to talk about how, how I uh, started Simply Learn. And since this is related to gig economy, I wanted to relate these two points together. So I, so I was kind of in between jobs in 2009. I had just sold my last company. I was, and I was still trying to figure it out, what can I do as a full-time career going forward? So I thought um, of starting a blog and my idea of starting a blog was uh, twofold. One, I wanted to learn internet on my own. So if you see it, internet has become such an important part of our life. You can't imagine life without internet, right? It has become as important as electricity, right? If not more. 
but in 2009 internet was limited to maybe checking emails and and occasional uh, search on google it was not as important as it is today but there are a lot of talks and a lot of white paper a lot of experts all ac across the world were saying that it, it's going to change the way we work and live and it has indeed done so so i wanted to learn internet and what all possibility exists on internet so that was one motive that i started this blog my second motive was that i love writing i used to always write um, columns and, and i used to write in my school days college days so it gave me a, a kind of um, it, it became a medium that helped me fulfill both my interests learning internet at, at the same time my passion for writing so when i started writing on simply learn blog i used to write a lot about my experience of running my previous startup and since i was the um, co-founder and chief operating officer i i had a lot of experience in terms of uh, how to build teams how to train teams how do you make sure that if your team across different parts of the world they perform in a consistent manner so a lot of work i had done uh, in that regard and also when i started my first startup it was way back in 2000 and 2000 this word a startup itself did not exist if you look at this is a recent phenomena where it st suddenly startup has become a a hot um, career uh, aspiration for many of the young uh, indians so when i started writing i saw that this blog started getting a lot of uh, acceptance i had a lot of people all across the world uh, writing to me in in form of comments some of them sending me email and so on so um, i uh, so that got me thinking i thought what if, uh, something that is a part time gig for me because i was still trying to figure it out what could be my full time career and suddenly this writing is resonating with so many people all across the world so that got me thinking that maybe there are people all across the world who are looking for some kind of career advice some kind of training some kind of professional help so that they can grow faster in the in their career so that became the starting point of simply learn way back in 2010 and if you see most of the global players who started offering uh, online courses everything started post 2010 so most of them started in 2010 and 2012 so we came out with this uh, concept way before it became accepted way of learning globally now uh, the uh, when i thought of uh, converting this blog as an online business i i was not really sure about how well it will be perceived in the market so what i started uh, doing was that instead of waiting to hire people full time i identified all possible roles that that are required to run an online business even during those time also you, you need a tech team to which can continuously work on your platform and make it more um, engageable and make it, make sure that it engages users and does all the functions that an online an online business has to do you needed a marketing team to promote this website because when it was free there was no need for me to promote this website right if someone is coming on their own it's also, it was okay but moment when i thought about making it as a full time uh, business it was important for me to promote this website so i required marketing help um, uh my marketing experts who could who could work on the website uh, based on my need and and promote it so i needed tech, technology professionals i needed marketing professionals i did, i needed sales guys and so on and so forth and i got all of them online so everybody was working for me remotely everybody was getting paid based on whatever they had committed to me and whatever was the agreed commercial and so on and so forth so first one year was was 100% gig workers and and we continue to employ a lot of gig workers today also so today if you have taken a course on simply learn platform and you are being taught by an expert most likely that expert is not a full time employee of simply learn they are they are they are an expert maybe working somewhere else full time and at the same time this is a part time gig for them wherein they like uh, sharing their learnings with um, other professional and at the same time make some make some money so and such kind of people we have all across the world and we continue whenever we have a new role we continue to see if if, if that if that person can be a gig worker rather than being a full time person so that's my background now let me also just uh, i know most of the participants are uh, tech professionals but i just for, for the sake of completeness i wanted to define what gig economy is and and just uh, share something that is happening all around us i live in bangalore i'm assuming a lot of you are are based out of various metros in in india so gig economy is defined by a labor market that is uh, characterized by prevalence of short term contract so when i say short term contract typically when you are employed uh, full time there is an employment contract that pays you irrespective of whatever you do in a, in a certain month If something is wrong there's there's a separate process to for for the person to, to get out of the organization but most like most, most of uh, the pro, most of the uh, the tech professionals are used to getting paid at the end of the month uh, through a regular uh, payroll cycle but when you talk about uh, gig economy it's about getting paid for a certain uh, agreed work in advance right and if you see um, uh, this was not a preferred way for uh, 
people to get employed in India, um, at least in the last uh, uh, few decades. But if you see long, long back before we uh, industrial revolution took over the world in the last uh, 100, 150 year back, this full-time employment was not a concept that existed in the past as well. Most of the time, most of the world has uh, was used to gig worker. Only during this industrial revolution when the large companies started getting built, they started hiring full-time employees so that they have more predictability and more control over the labor force. Now, if you see Indian Metro in particular, I think last uh, five years, we, we suddenly see so many workers on the road, right? Be it Uber, Ula, Jomato, Jomato Swiki, all this is last five-year-old phenomenon. If you just see what was happening five years back, we are never used to so many gig workers on the road doing a lot of uh, blue collar um, job for us. But um, if we see last uh, maybe 30, 40 years in India, we always had doctors, lawyers, chartered accountants who were not full-time employed into large firm. Most of them we used to run their small uh, business I and mean, we can think of them as gig workers. We used to pay a chartered accountant if we had to get a certain piece of work done from them or we used to get to a lawyer when you wanted a certain advice from them. So they're not full-time employed. Uh, most of them are independent workers. Uh, this is one data point that says that uh, this gig as a, a, a economy is growing roughly 17% CSGR. CSGR is average annual growth over a period of time. And it's going to become soon become a, a close to a half a trillion uh, business by 2023 in India. So this is an India number. So all indicators are that uh, this trend is going to continue. This trend has become quite a prominent uh, trend when it comes to blue collar workers, but soon uh, there are all indicators and I'll talk about why I, I think that there are indicators that it will become a prevalent way of hiring even in the uh, uh, tech workforce. And again, uh, keep uh, think for a moment, you suddenly see so many workers on the road doing working for all kinds of companies. This this phenomena was almost non-existent uh, uh, till about uh, five years back. So something can catch up so fast in five years can also happen in other industries as well. Now look at what is uh, we are living in a time which is quite uh, unprecedented. I, I don't think anybody would have ever imagined that something like this can happen to entire world at the same time. And this is also uh, going to push a uh, big uh, gig economy in a big way. So companies were um, earlier uh, looking at uh, having permanent employees and a lot of them also used to have a lot of contract employment. And most of this contract employment used to happen through third party companies that you hire a in between agency that will hire uh, on their role and they in turn will deploy to the large company. So they wanted to have the flexibility that if the work goes up and down, they can uh, let go of the contract employ employees faster um, so that there's no uh, so that there's, they have more control about on their payroll cost. But I think the current uh, phenomena that we all are going through, everybody's working from home. Most of the people have uh, done a great job. So most companies were concerned, what will happen if people uh, start working from home? Will they be productive? Will they be serious? Will they collaborate the way they want them to collaborate? So all these uh, you know, doubts and question mark many companies had, including uh, uh, me. But we're surprised to see that people, uh, if if um, if you give responsibility to um, people, they take up the, the, that responsibility quite seriously. So amazed to see that entire world has become uh, so productive and working from home at the same time. So I'm sure a lot of companies are seeing this trend across their business. And what it also translates uh, is a pretty good uh, phenomena for India in particular. Now imagine um, there is an um, there is an American or there is a global company, right? And global companies have workforce uh, based out of San Francisco, based out of Bangalore, and based out of many other parts of the world. If everybody is working from home, how, why should a company pay higher um, uh, uh, wages to someone who is who is based out of uh, California versus someone is someone is based out of say Texas or someone is based out of Bangalore? For them, if everyone is working from home, they would like to uh, have a pay parity across uh, the globe. And definitely this is going to be a boom uh, for India because if you are a tech developer and a really, really strong de developer based out of Bangalore, and if you produce similar kind of, kind of outcome for a global company, there is no reason why that global company will not, not pay you the same kind of wages they otherwise pay to pay someone that is based um, locally to their uh, uh, home. But now there is, since there is no home, it, it makes everyone the same. So, so a lot of people are predicting that this, this trend will only going to continue in future. And this also means another thing that um, jobs will move where uh, there are skill sets. So if there are more employed, more uh, skilled people in, in certain market, 
now that companies are open to hire from anywhere and everywhere they will hire people wherever they are wherever the availability is high and wherever they can get the person in the fastest um, time manner so so covid is only going to um, increase this uh, accelerate this trend of uh, companies looking for gig workers and companies looking for people anywhere in the world now this is a data point that i i i, I came across um, recently that says that um, Uh, and this this has nothing to do with covid this is like data that would that might that might on it um, that might change uh, maybe or get readjusted because of the current disruption that covid has uh, has created for many companies but this is directionally and largely true and this data is all about that by 2030 the so the shortage of skilled skilled talent is projected to result in half a 8.5 trillion loss in um, annual revenues so what it means is that there are companies who are looking to hire skilled talent but uh, the, 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 there is no skill availability now this has uh, the covid has added a new dimension to this whole data that earlier companies used to always open a position and most likely that position was always tied to a physical location that they are looking to hire in bangalore or looking to hire in a particular location but now companies will not put that uh, restriction as seriously as they used to do in the past they might some of them might still put it but now people will hire saying that i will hire talent wherever it is av available rather than lo losing revenue because of non availability of talent i'll hire the talent anyway so this is one set, set of data wherein there is a need for skilled talent especially in new age technologies and we'll talk about which are the areas where maximum hiring is happening but at the same time there's also a big uh, or a, i'll say huge risk uh, hanging um, on uh, tech professionals across the globe is that there are there is a chance that 50% of the global 1 billion uh, knowledge workers who are projected to need um, to need upskilling or retraining if they don't do that they most likely will get out of an uh, employment so most likely they will be asked to move on because their skills will no longer be relevant if they don't continuously reskill and re retrain themselves again what it has to do with gig workers i think people who are not uh, uh, so uh, one way one way of thinking is that many uh, people who are into full time employment we get this uh, wrong notion many a times that um, our jobs are 100% secure nothing is going to happen till something bad happens right so so the 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 uh, the, the tendency to upskill um, in full time employment is low because we in a way we have this uh, notion of uh, safety that i work in a large company and i will be taken care of i'll not be asked to leave if the work goes down um, uh, so soon so the 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 desire or i'll say the the focus on upskilling all the time is less whereas the gig workers know that uh, they get paid for their skill they get paid for their talent so they are generally always looking for ways in which they can add constant value to them and hence keep on increasing their employment uh, quotient in the market okay. now let's look at why so that so one reason is that availability of talent companies will go and hire from wherever they get uh, the kind of talent that they are looking for at the kind of price that they are willing to pay for that talent but there are other reasons why companies companies will continue to prefer hiring gig workers one is that um, Many times, if you want to hire for an expertise, there is no other way rather than looking for a gig worker. Like I'll tell you my personal experience here, that um, uh, a large part of Simply Learn business is organic traffic. We we work on optimizing our website for Google search alg algorithm, and Google search al algorithm changes very very frequently. Like it changes every day, and it's not an uh, overstatement if you say that it, it changes every hour. So. we have we have full time team members who try to analyze what what changes google has done in in, in its algorithm and try to optimize our uh, website to ensure that we get more traffic okay but there are there are uh, people who are uh, part of so called google search advisory team and these are the people all across the world and there are a lot of such people that google contacts them from time to time to seek their advice or give them their beta releases uh, uh, to get their feedback now one of those one of such person is also working as a gig worker for simply learn so he generally has a much uh, faster insight about what changes are coming on the algorithm what is that uh, what is the thought process at their end in terms of what website they want to uh, reward and what websites they want to penalize so that helps us a lot in in uh, get being prepared for the future 
So, but if I wanted to hire that person full time, I don't think if, if he would come because if many people when they get to a certain stage in their career where they become a real big expert, they don't want to work with one uh, project or one is on product at a time. They want to use their expertise um, in, in helping many different kind of businesses, and that also helps them become more a better expert in future. So that's one example of a gig worker. Instead of being fixed uh, fixed mindset that this is the guy that I want full time, we were open to hire such experts um, from anywhere in the world in any kind of engagement that a model that can work for both of us. And I'm sure many companies are thinking in the, in, in the same lines. And uh, there are other lot of benefits, like if you have a gig worker, there is no concept of notice period. There is, you don't have to onboard. You don't have to train because you're hiring exactly for the skill set that you're looking for. And that person comes with that kind of skill set. Okay? And since all the work is based on timeline and milestone, it, it makes uh, the overall work very efficient. The other person, uh, uh, the person at the other end also realizes that he's a gig worker. So more and more focused in making sure that whatever is delivering has a value and he, can, he continuously shows value in, in his work. Uh, many times, uh, if, uh, if when companies are looking at building competency in a new area that they don't understand, that's the time they use gig worker because they don't know what they don't know. So when they get some workers to start working from them, it helps them understand that area better and, and helps them hire such kind of talent better in the future. It also increases the pool. So if you are looking uh, open for all kind of employment contract all across the world, your pool of hiring candidate also goes uh, bigger and bigger. So that makes the, the life easier. And in the medium to long term, it keeps the cost down. So though you, uh, to a gig worker, you might be paying higher unit costs. So per hour uh, uh, price that you pay to a gig worker might be higher. But in the long term, it, it turns out to be better because um, uh, you are... Uh, not paying when uh, you're not getting any corresponding outcome. Out so these are some of the reasons why company hire for a gig worker. Now look, let's look at some of the industries which are uh, still hiring a lot of technology professional. Um, so the tech industry continues to grow. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, COVID is only helping tech, uh, technology to uh, grow to accelerate further. Uh, professional services continues to grow. A lot of companies uh, require help from professional tech companies to uh, for, for, for them to implement all kinds of technology solution. Healthcare, as you know, uh, this uh, this has also put a lot of focus on healthcare. So healthcare uh, industries is growing. A lot of um, pharma companies are really doing very well. Education is another category. I have first-hand experience about this category. It's growing. There's a lot of desire among people to see uh, that they'll uh, upskill themselves. And if you see uh, in India, a lot of companies which, which let go of uh, their team, uh, majority of that let go has happened in non-tech functions. Most of the people are that I, most of the CEOs that I talk in my uh, circle, everybody is saying that whether they are impacted or whether they are not impacted, everybody has a common understanding that this might be a great time to build uh, uh, and build your, your technology product so that once market comes back to normal, you have some competitive advantage compared to your competition. So, so whoever I talk, they are only upgrading their uh, technology team. They're looking at hiring more and trying to uh, build some features and uh, differentiation compared to the competition. Banking, financial services, energy, utilities, there's no impact on these businesses because we continue to use, to use electricity and water and so on. Banking services continue to function because we continue to, to pay bills and, and so on and so forth. So the lot of sectors which are not impacted, they continue to hire and there is no uh, slowing down of any kind. And when they're hiring, they're hiring, hiring all kinds of talent, including the big talent. Now going back to, so I wanted to share which are some of the most pop, uh, in demand skill uh, in the market today when it comes to gig workers, what is the indicative rate? So there are a lot of roles that are being hired and I'll, I'll going forward in this presentation, I'll show you where you can get these kind of jobs. Um, there are a lot of platforms where you can get uh, to see these jobs, you can apply for those jobs. What I have listed here is the top 10 uh, roles that I could find on, on various platform and this is based on some platform ranking. I'm sure if you go to different platform, the ranking will be different. But as you can see that blockchain developer, Golang, Apache, Kafka uh, developer. So all, so all these are new technologies and, if, and there is more, um, dem more demand for workers in this area. And I'm sure there's a demand for full-time um, employees also in this area. The fact that companies have listed this skill set on the gig uh, platform because they are open to hire in all kinds of model. And there is a huge demand supply gap in any of these areas that you see. AWS developer, 
though it's not a new skill, uh, I think it's, it's been there for in the market for last uh, three, four years, but it's only growing, growing, growing because more and more companies are going on, on cloud. So have to repeat blockchain, uh, Golang, Apache, uh, Kafka developer, solutions architect, AWS developer, information security consultant. Now cybersecurity has suddenly become very important because people are working from home and there's a lot of uh, training required on data security. Uh, when when people were working from office, there are a lot of firewalls and lot kind lot was in control um, of uh, in company's hand. But now the fact that physically you are outside the company uh, premises, it exposes to all kinds of uh, cybersecurity fraud. So companies are deploying new set of technology to make sure that they don't end up losing their confidential data, they they don't end up losing uh, their customers' data, and so on. TensorFlow developer, again, related to machine learning, that's pretty much in demand. UI UX designers, again, um, huge shortage in these areas and, and, and we continue, all kinds of companies continues to look for uh, this talent. Web developers, now web developer was something that was uh, a gig, uh, um, a, popular, a popular gig uh, role, even before 10 years back. So I, 10, and there are all kinds of uh, small businesses that look for building their web platform and there's no way for them to afford and have a full-time technology team. Many of them can't afford and go to a professional services company because the companies will not take a small assignment, nor they can afford their, their uh, rates. So they, so you always see a lot of web developer, SEO, uh, UI UX, uh, graphics designer, those kind of roles in plenty on all, all uh, gig platform uh, um, across the world. Salesforce developer, again, pretty much in demand. This is uh, the product that is doing doing really, really very well. So these are the top 10 uh, indicators. And I'm sure there are many more roles on which hiring is happening. And one common trend that we see that if something is popular, you have all kinds of role, including the gig role. Now in one uh, technology in particular, I wanted to touch base uh, briefly is DevOps. So DevOps is a, is a new methodology and it's all about that software development and IT operations should go hand in hand. So you build something and you put it into the production immediately. So you don't build something and then wait for it to go live and people start using it. So it's a, it's a real time work wherein you release a feature and it's available to customer immediately. Now this methodology has taken over uh, the entire uh, tech community across the world. And it's all about collaboration. It's about coll people at different location collaborating with each, each other to produce some outcome. Now the fact that DevOps is getting so much of popularity, it will it's only going to encourage the culture of uh, uh, freelancing or gig. So you can be part of a team that is distributed all across the world. You can contribute in real time. So as this technology becomes, or this methodology becomes more and more popular, as the tools evolve more and more in future, I think it's only going to further increase uh, uh, this whole gig assignment and freelancing assignment in future. So if you are if you are exposed to DevOps as a methodology, if you are a, if you work in a DevOps based team, I think you can find a lot of gig assignment for you. And if you and especially if you are exposed to tools like Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, lot of demand all across the world. When it comes to testing, I listed some of the skill set that will make you very desirable in in a in a gig economy is. Um, Exposure to agile methodology, test case management, uh, uh, having worked on multiple automation testing project, and um, AI. Now there are a lot of uh, I think one thing that I wanted to write, but I, I forgot to write is Selenium. Selenium is the tool that has that's becoming a default tool for uh, testing professionals. A lot of Selenium based uh, jobs available on all kinds of platform. Nowadays a new concept is coming up, and this concept is taking over uh, very very rapidly. Is that uh, advanced AI based automation tool? So a lot, of, a lot of companies are focusing wherein how can AI help their automation in a much uh, better way compared to the existing automation uh, uh, scripts that we write. So, so many new uh, tools are coming up and that is an area for you to watch out as this becomes more, as this AI based testing automation tool become more and more popular, the demand of gig worker is going to grow exponentially higher in, in this area. Now coming back to the platforms where you can find this kind of jobs. So I've listed all kinds of uh, plat uh, platform. One is that uh, this testing. So you can see the number of uh, platforms that uh, that are uh, that uh, advertise uh, freelance or gig work, and multiple such platforms exist. Like this 99 test I have used in the past, pretty good. So 
all kinds of platform have all kinds of job and there's no end to the number of jobs that you can get on uh, uh, related to um, qa and uh, testing when it comes to finding a, a good uh, uh, tech uh, developer uh, related work i have seen upwork to be very very effective you can build a, a in fact you can build a strong profile of yours and if you have done some good job a lot of people will start contacting you for their requirement also to you and many of the small size uh, professional services company they rely a lot on getting new work uh, from upwork so very very well highly recommended platform this used to be called uh, elance in the past and i have used this extensively so can personally vouch for uh, um the, this platform being a great source to get work and also to get work done so if you want to give identify a gig worker who can work for you it's a great platform if you are a gig worker you want to get some work done again a great platform then there are other platform like freelancers uh, true lancer and i also come came across this platform called tapchief this is a bangalore based company and they also seem to be working on the lines of work work but more india focused so and they also have a lot of job listing uh, and work i not say job listing i'll say work listing because in a gig economy you get paid for the work it's not a job so you can look you can check out and see if there's something matching your um, interest and um, experience or not now i uh, i wanted to show you this um, uh, four logos i'm sure all of you know eny and ipro but do you know that eny and ipro have their own platforms through which they attract uh, gig workers so eny has launched a platform called gig now and more and they are advertising a lot of work that comes to eny and for which they don't want to hire full time talent but they want to rely on gig worker who can work for eny not directly but through this gig now platform so they are heavily focusing on and making this platform popular similarly ipro uh, in fact they acquired this company called top coder and top coder is again a gig economy big gig uh, concept wherein if there are uh, software development work that is coming up instead of giving to ipro full time employees and full time team they look at if if developers all across the world can collaborate on top coder and get the work done so i'm sure, so these are the two things that i personally am aware of, uh, of uh, but i'm sure uh, if any such trend uh, uh, becomes uh, any such trend starts working uh, it, all these companies will employ this kind of strategy so eny and ipro is a good example of a professional services company i know there are many other large professional services company that employ large employee base and all of them are one way or other trying to experiment with this concept and maybe in future they might get to a scenario wherein they will have a equal size gig team and equal size uh, full time team that gives them a lot of flexibility so this so these are like early indicator that this trend is is coming catching up and this trend is catching up really fast okay now um, i also wanted to caution you that um, uh, it sounds exciting that uh, by becoming a gig worker you you, you have complete control uh, on your, your on your own schedule you, de you decide when do you want to work you decide when you take vacation you can like there are people i know in my network also who maybe work for 4 or 5 months in a year and remaining time they do what uh, suits them like one of my friend he likes traveling so he has divided his time into like two months he works one month he takes a break and so on throughout the year and he has been doing that successfully for last 7 8 years that i know and and very very successful financially is doing much better than had he done uh, taken a full time uh, job so there are a lot of such people but it it has its own uh, challenges like um, you you should think about becoming a gig worker today only when you are very very confident about your skills and you are the one who continuously thinks about uh, how can you add more uh, skill to your profile how can you become more employable how can you learn another new thing that that makes you a stronger professional in the area of your expertise if you are um, not the kind of person who who is continuously trying to learn new things i think it might not be a good idea to venture and become a gig worker you also require a lot of other skills to for, for you to become successful doing that so more, uh, while i talked about platform on which you can get this kind of uh, gig assignment but i have also seen that some of your best gig assignment comes through network so if you have worked in a company or you have worked with a team and you have done a great job those guys will recommend you for another work and those are the guys who will go and uh, if they if those guys move to another company they'll again think of you and they'll they'll uh, approach you to do something for them so some of the skills that are required is um, uh, a lot of um, 
confident uh, confidence about your own uh, skills and ability you need to question what kind of person you are are you the one who continuously invest time in yourself making yourself more desirable um do you do you like networking with people do you like uh, being in touch so that they can refer you from for, for um, one role or another and do you keep a track on all the technology trends that are happening uh, all around you like for example if you are a developer if you are not keeping in pace with devops it's very difficult to get any kind of work related to that and if you think that for you job security is important and you can uh, you, when there is no work at your on your table and you don't know what you do then it might not it may be mentally uh, exhausting as well like a lot of people who prefer gig work they have a very clear second passion in, in addition to work they have some interests uh, that can keep them occupied as long as they want so they will not work unless there is a real need for them to work so if you don't have a very strong second interest and while you are moving from one assignment to another assignment and unfortunately uh, the other assignment takes more time for you to come then it might become a become a challenge for you so you should you should try to analyze who you are before you uh, decide whether this is the right um, view of uh, being employed or not okay now also also uh, understand what all skill sets are required i think these are two related uh, thoughts that um, some of the skills required is that uh, you, not only knowing the skill but you should also figure it out a way through which you can demonstrate your skill right there are a lot of certifications there are a lot of uh, courses available in the market and if you have done those courses and you are uh, um, applying for a gig uh, work on any of those platforms that are listed it also uh, helps you get uh, the conversation started like you say that okay you are a devops engineer and you say that okay you did a devops course from so and so and like for example simply learn as a devops course in collaboration with caltech so you've done that course it becomes it adds a further credibility and someone is looking to hire you as a gig worker if they see a strong credential in your profile it helps start a conversation so if you don't uh, if you like doing those kind of things it makes sense for you to think about uh, this as a career option and and uh, as i uh, spoke in the previous slide also focus on building a great network because the best assignment comes through uh, the, the network and uh, uh, one last point that i think is very very important is that once you uh, sign up for a gig assignment is very important that you set the right expectation and uh, about your work that what is that you have signed up for and what is that you get paid for many times what i have also seen on even on platforms like upwork and so that you get you do something but you don't get paid because what was communicated what was understood there's a lot of differences between these two also just to re clarify so gig work is not a contract work that you be, you get hired by someone on a contract that's a different kind of employment gig work is all about getting paid for outcome and this is for people who are uh, who want to maybe make more money so see one uh, one expectation of becoming gig work gig worker also is that i spend less time but i do quality work i do high end work and i get paid more by giving less time so that i can do much many other things also in life so it's important for you to understand that what is that you're signing up and and learn to set the right expectation right deliverables so that you get paid and it also also build a, a strong profile for you for future okay now let's look at some of the regulation that is our country ready for uh, gig working so i think uh, since we have seen that there are um, uh, hundreds of thousands of people who work in as a blue collar, collar in a gig economy in india as well as in the world uh, so there is already uh, uh, some regulation but it's still not 100% clear like for example the recent uh, covid uh, crisis in us uh, uh, the government has allow, uh, announced a 2 trillion package and this is for the first time they have also covered all the gig workers earlier this kind of employment package was given to full time employees who were who were associated with the company but for the first time this covers a gig worker also so in a way it, it's um, accept accept accepting them also as a as a way of employment like a lot of companies never used to give healthcare benefits to gig workers but now they have started giving so this is also kind of uh, identifying that this kind of this employment contract or this kind of hiring is also going to be a norm in future hence there should be regulation related to that uh, one of the latest latest development related to um, uh, tech professional is what uh, nascom is is batting for so there is a recent nascom uh, development wherein they are trying to uh, talk to employers as, as well as the government on uh, dual employment so so if someone can be employed by two companies at the same time like most of you who are employed you know that if you are a full time employee of one company 
you need to uh, share those details with our um, uh, pf office right the, your pf is always linked with one one uh, employer and when you move from one employer to another employer you need to transfer your pf but if we uh, accept the fact that the person can be employed by two companies at the same time then those regulation also needs to get changed so these are some of the discussion happening i'm sure covid and w uh, work from home is accelerating companies government and everyone to recognize the need for a new model and maybe couple of years down the line we will not even talk about this as a new model because it will become so much prevalent way of working and um, uh, wor working for us as a professional as well as companies to hire as a way of attracting good talent so this is what i had i wanted to uh, share to set context i am open to uh, take uh, any questions uh, related to that so i'll stop sharing and start looking for uh, questions from your side Thank you, Krishna. That was a really good primer on uh, gig economy and how it's shaping up. Um, let me start. Uh, what do you think firms look for when they're hiring uh, gig workers? Um, how do you think the resumes of gig employees look different from those who are applying for full-time roles? So I think, uh, Shilpa, this is a great question. I, I think I, I, I didn't think about it. I should have covered that in detail. See, one is that there is a difference when someone is hiring for a gig worker. I want to clarify again that this is not a contract hire. This is mostly a hire for outcome, and this is generally a well-paid job. It is it is not a job wherein you get uh, you don't get paid well. You get really really paid very well. But think of you in the current scenario. If company is hiring gig worker, they are looking at you as a possible replacement for not going to another company, another professional services company. So any technology company, they want to hire any number of worker. If they go to any of this professional services company, and what I mean by professional services companies, companies like IBM, Accenture, uh, Upro, and Infosys, they'll never say no. They will say, okay, well, any kind of talent anywhere in the world you want, we can provide you. But the fact that companies are directly going and hiring gig worker, they are looking for a replacement of that model. So it's not a cheap hiring that they want to do. So most important thing becomes your portfolio of what you have done. And hence, I was talking about in the previous slide that if you uh, sign up for a gig assignment, make sure that you set right expectation so that once you deliver your work, the the person who has hired and paid you has given a good review. So you can see a lot of people on on uh, platforms like Upwork who make million dollar a year. That's a pretty good money as a gig. There are it's not one or two. I think there are hundreds of people who make million dollar and, and upwards on a platform like Upwork doing all kinds of uh, gig work for companies across the board. And the reason why they get more and more work because of the reviews that they have about the past assignment that they have done. So it's all about building portfolio. If you build a strong portfolio and showcase so that you don't get interviewed in a typical manner. In a, in a full-time employment, the challenge is that you can't share um, work beyond a certain point because you are restricted by the confidentiality agreement of the companies that you have signed up. So uh, my question is, uh, the second question that we got is along, you covered parts of it, but, but if it's a new person, somebody who's trying to get into this field, how does one, he or she stand out so that uh, you, know, you get some decent salaries? or get up to the top of the peak in some sense. So I think, still, I think uh, for there we need to set the right expectations. If you are just starting up and you are a new person, most likely you can't suddenly become the top earning guy. So this, that's a journey that you need to take. And I think uh, if you are a strong uh, person and you want to become a gig worker, uh, you should also be expecting such work from your past uh, colleagues. So you become a gig worker, your, your colleague might be working in a different project. They know you. You can approach them. So that's why networking is a very important skill. The first few assignments comes through networking. Then at the same time, you start working on this different platform. If they, if you don't have work also, maybe you can do something from your own side and start putting on those platforms saying, look, these are the work that I can do. Think of it on how a small company has got set up. So they do a lot of proof of concepts. They just show and, and they do things out just like that and, and build the portfolio. For the tech workers, the, the good news is that they have so much of opportunities to collaborate on many open source projects. So you can you can you can go and contribute to open source project, and you can say that look, I'm part of this open source project, which is building something like this. That's a great uh, way of uh, getting yourself endorsed, right? So for tech people, there are a lot of avenues. Like you can go and create something on Kaggle, you can go and do something on Apache. A lot of opportunity exists for them to showcase that they are really talented. 
do you think the fang companies um, offer gig roles um, what are some of the things that you need to do if you have to be considered for those roles which companies it was uh, facebook, uh, facebook amazon apple netflix google i think uh... see i don't see that there's much difference like see obviously their their ex- expectation from such uh, workers is very very high because obviously right. they pay higher compared to other companies but most of the hiring that they are also doing is is all about new and emerging technologies right many times like we recently we saw a news wherein someone helped uh, find a bug uh, in apple sign up and they got paid right so right. people who are really top notch there are a lot of things that they can do right to get employed by these companies the good news is that these companies are more open to hire uh, gig workers across the world than they were in the past and we only going to see the trend accelerating because google made a public announcement also that till uh, uh, december they will not uh, ask people to come uh, to office right? in fact they are also encouraging by paying them to set up their home office right. so and and the, another good news about these companies are that since they are very very strong tech companies they have very good infrastructure of uh, for people to work remotely so i so I, if i have to like guess about future see five years down the line maybe these companies will have as high as 70% of their workforce as gig workers and maybe only 25% as full time and they'll not also differentiate between a full time and gig maybe they'll give them the same platform to work so that you don't get a feeling whether you are a full time or whether you are a gig Is there any risk at all in this? Um, that uh, I mean, of course, I've been told that I'll get so many uh, dollars per hour or whatever, and then I don't get it. Uh, what are the risks, and how do I can I legally take it up? So, uh, Sujit, so that's again a very good point. So, if you, the some of the platforms that I talked about, like Upwork, Tapchief, or all those platforms that I listed, that's their role. So, these platforms not only help you. I, they not only aggregate demand from different providers they also in a way uh, ensure that you get paid like upwork uh, the moment as a as a employer as a gig employer if you post a work they'll ask you to put that amount into upwork um, oh. what is that called that um, there's a term um, uh, uh, i i i know uh, yeah, what there's, account no escrow uh, escrow yeah exactly so they'll ask you okay. to put money in oh. escrow account yeah oh, really? yeah then you get the work started So oh, they are, and they are taken care of, right? Plus, they also give you platform to project manage your work. So let's say the work is worth ten thousand dollars. So you don't; it's not zero or one. You do something, you get one thousand dollars, and so on. So they, they also help you divide. So okay. these platforms have pretty good important role to play, especially when you are dealing with people that you don't know. And of course, at some point in time, you'll be dealing with people that you don't know. But if you know people through a network, obviously, you it's based on your trust that you sign up. but but inherently having said that there is a risk there is a risk yeah. some bit of risk uh, is there. Yeah. even in these platforms or uh, even the last platform. payment by something that we uh, can disagreement wherein the both parties will claim uh, that i did i okay. didn't do so there is some element of risk but uh, see many people do this they also say that okay as long as i if i'm doing 10 assignment one of them assignment might go wrong but even if i do nine good assignment i am taking uh, care of okay. Shilpa, right, Krishna, can you talk about um, the landscape for uh, mobile app development? Um, uh, what is the kind of uh, you know um, conversation that you've had with developers, and how are they really approaching these roles? I think, Shilpa, this is also a role that is like uh, growing pretty rapidly because mobile is becoming a, becoming I think uh, more prevalent in our life than desktops. so right. there is definitely a lot of focus on uh, all kinds of uh, rules within mobile and the the rules are also evolving much faster than what we could imagine right if like there is a um, uh, till recently there was a rule called uh, progressive web pages there was one way to optimize your uh, uh, mobile uh, websites and mobile platform and i thought this was the most latest thing uh, that has come in the market till uh, till uh, when i heard that there's something called amp that has come up accelerated mobile pages by google so the 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 pace of development in mobile is i think the fastest and it's not only the roles which are developer and tech related roles that are coming into demand there's a lot of uh, demand on um, uh, roles which are um, around technology like for example how do you engage users on mobile how does your conversion f- uh, funnel looks on mobile if 
so let's say x number of users are coming to your mobile funnel how many of them end up completing your desired flow by the time they come out so a lot of so it's it's building an entire ecosystem around uh, mobile which is not only developer developers testers something called api uh, developer that if you are building uh, mobile apps it has to be all microservices based so how do you optimize your microservices services to Uh, deliver on on mobile so this this is becoming really really prevalent and again this also might not be a, be a understatement when we say that in future more development will happen on mobile than on desktop um is teaching tech topics and all that uh, you yourself are, i mean simply on itself is more than that uh, is gig working big there and is uh, how you communicate is that a very important thing especially in the uh, in a remote uh, setup yeah definitely i think uh, as a gig worker uh, collaboration communication becomes really really very important because you are only, you are not uh, physically sitting with a person right and now this in current scenario everybody is is uh, forced to learn that and i'll tell you uh, what i also experienced in last two months when our 100% of, so i have 1000 workforce that is all working from home one thing that i notice is that uh, i had maximum challenges uh, or feedback related to tech team that some of that while they are very comfortable working remotely they have all the infrastructure they, they, nothing is missing for them to do day, day to day work but this communication and collaboration becomes uh, much more important in that team compared to let's say a product team or a sales team because they are generally more communicative right they talk they collaborate a lot but this team was like okay tell me what has to be done i'll get it done so this is a skill set uh, that's definitely missing and i think this is in general uh, one of the demerit of uh, indian education system also right mm-hmm. you see a lot of people end up becoming engineers but we never have they never taught told to go and speak right whereas mm-hmm. you look at american education people are they talk yeah, a lot, of, yeah, lot of focus on talking focus on communication that. even a lot of people go and uh, do a part time job while they are doing a full time uh, schooling right If, uh-huh. I have not met any American who has not worked in a McDonald's or you know, that. <laughs> like even the people from good family, everybody is there. But the moment you are you are sitting in front of a cash counter as a <laughs> maybe seventeen year old kid, you are all talking, right? So those things are very natural, which is not there in our country. Uh-huh. Shilpa, we have a question from our audience, Wajid. So he wants to know that if a gig worker has the skills. but uh, you know doesn't have the experience uh, how does one really showcase his or her skills because companies usually ask for experience and they look for that so how do you think they can uh, do some sort of an ice breaking here so about it in a, this this whole concept of how many number of years of experience that you have is generally more important when you are applying for a full time uh, role because companies have set uh, hr policies even if some hiring manager wants to change that they can't change it overnight we have to follow work within the framework set up by the company but when you are on the gig platform nobody is going to ask you how many years of experience they have they are only going to ask you what you have done so if you really have the skill i suggest that do some proof of concept like let's say you are a designer right create some new design good designs and keep it on on your portfolio so let people see that okay this is what i have done the moment you start showing what you have done then your so called number of years of experience becomes irrelevant and this was more uh, popular concept maybe 10 years back so 10 year back i also hu- used to hear this uh, recruiter saying that there are companies who pay you 1x of your experience as salary so if you have 10 year experience you get 10 lakh there are companies who used to pay 2x there are companies who used to pay 3x and so on that whole concept has gone gone away right now the concept is that which technology you are working on how and how well uh, worse you are in that area right but this is more like a past hangout or else a past hangover that still many people are living with like for example many many of this young startups that i see have this have a rule that okay don't advertise number of years of experience in the role mm-hmm. is hire for the talent don't say we need a somebody with 10 year or 15 year or 7 year you just want an architect show us that you can architect, architect this and show us show us that you have done something like this in the past uh we get a lot of qa uh, professionals among the audience uh what are the opportunities for qa roles in this So I think QA roles. So there are two ways. If you are a manual QA, which is like understanding the requirement and trying to manually test one by one, I think it's high time for you to really uh, get very very alert and think about making a transition. It's not about gig economy. It's not about uh, full time. We see manual testing as a profession not going to go away really long. 
even if it go uh, goes uh, stays for some time it will get very very limited now there are two kinds of test uh, testing that is going to happen in the future one automation testing like so you need to learn uh, languages like java and python so that you can write a lot of script and automate what you are doing many companies have already moved that path many are moving in that path rapidly there's a new phenomena that is also happening which is uh, ai based automation tool lot of ai based automation tools are in the market they have not become as prevalent as it is as uh, uh, there are tools like selenium and and all which are automation testing tool but i think fast forward two years we'll see automation testing taking over the market in a big way so if you want to like future proof your career identify those uh, ai automation tool and start playing with them and get very very comfortable with um, using them for the business need so while this ai based automation tool will come you still need a qa professional who will understand the business requirement and fit that requirement to those ai based tools so that business understanding component is is not going to go away krishna we have a question from our audience vijay kumar so he wants to know if there is a beginners course by simply learn to take up gig roles in development and testing so unfortunately I, i don't have any course that talks about uh, gig uh, um, how to become a gig worker that's a good point it's, it's not something that will develop a course on maybe we'll create some video content and make it free on our youtube channel it's definitely a very good input and thank you for that we have a lot of courses related to uh, uh, qa and programming and you can watch out on cpl on site there are a lot of full stack development courses on various technologies there's also a very good course that helps you make a transition from qa to qe what what we mean by qa to qe is more like from becoming a quality analyst to quality engineer and and we refer quality analyst as uh, someone who was primarily doing manual testing and from there on you want to become an automation testing guy so there is very good course that you can subscribe to but very good input on this whole kick thing we'll definitely uh, do something around that balance time when you're doing multiple gig jobs and all that any advice on that uh sujita sorry uh, can you repeat uh, uh, how do you balance time between multiple gig jobs and all that do you have any advice on that i think uh, see first uh, as i was telling you that this gig work uh, is not for everyone you should look at this work only when you have a very strong second interest like all people that in my network who i see are doing gig work they know how much is their worth in the market and they know if as long as by doing gig work uh, they can make more than their full time employment worth and it still leaves them with a lot of time to pursue their their other passion right so if you are a gig work if you have a similar kind of mindset that you have a very strong second interest then it might be a good profession you are getting paid whenever you are getting a good assignment otherwise you are doing something that you always wanted to do so that's my uh, uh, suggestion that if you are looking gig time uh, gig uh, employment just to increase your overall employment um, potential then i think uh, you also, again we need to constrain your mind that there will be periods where you will have no work like for example what happened during covid time a lot of companies who were who were sitting with huge amount of cash they also froze everything they had no reason to suddenly become so uh, conservative suddenly become so negative but fact that nobody knew how long this is going to take right people were predicting all kinds of outcome right so suddenly you will have work and the first set of work that will get impacted in such kind of scenario is gig contract and so on so there is that element of risk uh, krishna you spoke about uh, the million dollar gig developers right and uh, how do they make visible uh, make themselves visible on several platforms what are some of the things they really need to put out there you know for them to get noticed so silver says go great question and i think anybody who who has that kind of aspiration to make million dollar on a platform like upwork uh, they have a lot of content uh, that explains them how you can become uh, get into that league and you can also check out for these people you can see that some of the common traits that you see among this kind of people is that uh, they talk a lot about what they have done for their customers uh, who have who have who had hired them and they also get a lot of testimonials from those customers saying that see i was hired by so and so person to deliver this i delivered so it's not a self claim by you it's also a claim verified by the people who hired and they are they, they are generally more um, social media friendly so when they do something they always so if you do a good job for a for a uh, customer it's a good idea that get connected with him on linkedin also because somebody who hired you for a gig assignment today from in one company 
will maybe move to another company in future so think of this gig work also as 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 business like this is how companies work companies always work on testimonials companies all, always work on relationship they work on they work on references and so on so in a way also another way of thinking is that you are a solo player you have a skill set and you are marketing yourself to get your work done right right uh, well, i see extension of this like like for example if you look at this website like say urban pro right i'm sure a lot of you use urban pro to get instead like i uh, I contacted some a lady on Urban Pro to get English tuition for my son, and she said, "Okay, I'll get you a trainer." I said, "Well, I I thought I'm directly talking to a trainer." Well, no, no, no. Since I get so much of inquiries that I now have a set of people who work for me. So there are people in a way building small business around uh, this gig uh, concept. What What is your sense? Are there a lot of uh, full time employees who are also on the side doing? Work. See, my my sense is that um, uh, for hardcore uh, tech roles, uh, people who are who have like strong, ser- serious, and higher responsibility in companies as a tech professional, especially in this new age uh, companies where where there's a lot of pressure to do things faster, is very difficult for them to do a gig work in a part time way. Reason is that there's so much of responsibility already, right? I can't imagine. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Whereas people who work in the services sector, they might be doing it because they're my, my current. Uh, so large as the companies become more and more large they build a lot of layer and as they build a lot of layer inefficiency comes in now out of that inefficiency there are some people who get frustrated that i have like one of my friend i was in um, uh, indiana in in february and he is based out of indiana in a city and he says that i go to a, he, he works for a large financial services company in in us he says that ki what i have to do in office doesn't require more than 3 hours of my life and he has big time uh, saying what do i do next so he does something else in the part time and not because he wants to make money because yeah. this guy company doesn't want to move fast enough and because of his own family constraint he can't change location right now obviously for people like him this whole work from home will be a boom right they can work for any company from anywhere we have a question from sorry sorry go ahead sujit sorry go on go on go on now we have a question from smita she has quit her uh, full time role during maternity uh, when she took a maternity break so she wants to know how she can leverage uh, some of these platforms to find the growth and keep her career going so smita uh, um, i as I, i showed you various platform there are platform like tapchief there are platform like upwork upwork is something that i have first hand experience so i can tell very highly about uh, start searching for uh, roles based on the skill set that you had in the past and not only the skill set that you worked on also identify skill set that, that are adjacent to your skill set so maybe there are areas that you are doing and that those areas have evolved and if you think that you can spend some time to acquire those skills you can start applying for work and for the for the working or for the um, uh, people who have taken a maternity break and who continue to uh, uh, to desire not to get into a full time employment i think this is a great opportunity to uh, find this kind of work because there's a lot of willingness on the company side also to employ people who can work only for 4 hours or 5 hours or assignment based work but don't limit to what you are doing find areas which are adjacent to it, your areas or, or areas that it has got evolved in uh, so your role has must have got evolved into something new by now uh, uh, this is question from parvati it's, it's from the companies who are hiring gig workers uh, from that point of view organizations that hire gig workers are at risk of not getting the desired outcome from the job how do companies So I think this is a uh, this happens even in full time employment. If you look at you, it happens that you hire someone and then you spend time on onboarding training, and then you don't get the result uh, out of that. So obviously nobody is happy doing that, but this is part of doing business, right? What we call the cost of doing business. So companies are are companies when they hire for any kind of role, they are always prepared for such kind of outcomes. Uh, Sujit, there's a question from Sujit. Yeah, one last thing from my side, Krishna. You know, those who actually teach the courseware, they're also, you know, um, earn million dollar plus packages. Um, you know, can a developer aspire to also be, you know, to teach on these platforms? So, uh, Silpa, actually, if you see, many of them already do that. Many of uh, these people who are really, really successful at their export. See, one is that they make money by really working on real project. See, if you want to become an expert, you can't become a theoretical expert. You might have been an expert till five years back, 
and after five years back you become a theoretical person then your expertise starts reducing because uh, uh, the bad uh, we call it good thing or bad thing about technology is that you need to be on you, it's, it's like a tiger that you're sitting on the back and you need to come Com- ride it all the time. The moment you stop, it will bite you. So you become completely redundant. So many people that I uh, that I have uh, that I uh, that who are like this so-called expert, even even if they teach on platforms like Simply Learn or the Udemy is a very popular platform where a lot of people go and build video, they also do project at the same time. So many people are already doing it. That it, it, this is one of the reasons also why at Simply Learn I, we never hired full-time employees as trainers. Because one of our strong belief is that if somebody is a full-time trainer, mm-hmm. you become theoretical over a period of time. So you always focus on finding people who are uh, consultant or employed doing certain uh, hands-on uh, role. They become a part-time trainer on our, on our platform because by design, this is a geek role. You don't expect you to, to train for eight hours. You expect you to train maybe two hours in a day. So this is already a second income method for lots of people. You can, you can find some of the most popular people on Upwork also on maybe... Udemy and those kind of platforms. What is your sense? Uh, you think uh, the number of gig workers will go up now? Uh, but there's a, a lot of people have less to do now, is it? Uh, what, what is your sense? So my sense is that see, from a company's perspective, it makes a lot of sense. As technology of, uh, as DevOps and those kind of technology become more and more um, prevalent, it will not make a lot of difference for companies whether you are a good worker or whether you are a full-time worker. So for companies' perspective, it's a lot more, uh, I'll say, profitable uh, to promote gig working. From the employee's perspective, I think it, it's a mindset change because it's a, there's an inherent risk. Your say, employment risk is a risk of being non-employed for some time. So it will take some time for people to get adjusted to that scenario. A lot of people who are more confident, it will happen. So my feeling is that gig working will increase in top, you know, top no- notch category. Like many AI developers, UI UX developers, cloud architect, they would start going the gig way because they will realize that they have more control over their destiny and they also end up making more money. When this professional services come in, like what I showed you about top coder that is Vipro is promoting and what GigNow, ENY is promoting, if these kind of companies start promoting this as a culture, then this so-called the loss of employment risk will go away. Because then people know that okay, if I don't get a job on top coder, I can get something on Gigna or I can get something on other platform. It will not happen that I'll not get a work uh, if I'm a skilled. So the, mom- the moment people have their, uh, that thing going in their mind that it's a matter of time. I can get a role maybe in one week or maybe one month. Or the question is whether I get it in a week or the question is whether I get it in a month. If you get to that stage, I think a lot of people start preferring that. Okay. We proved quite top quarter a long time ago, but I haven't seen them making any noise about it. I don't know why, but I, I, I first time heard about top coder when I was meeting one of the pro uh, senior executive about a year and a half back. Then. But that time I was saying that, okay, we are really looking after, uh, going after this in a big way. We want, we, are, we want to encourage. Really? Okay. Yeah. Krishna, do Chipa, you I see one last yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, Raj, for an IT freelancer, what certifications will help boost chances of getting gig roles during COVID times? See, it, it all depends upon when you say IT professional is a pretty vast area, right? Depending okay. upon what, if you're a cloud professional, obviously AWS certification has a lot of value. So you can go for AWS certification. If you are a data related guy, then you can go for it, some data science certification or data science course. If you're a IT security guy, then you can go for some cyber security related course. So if you go to Simply Learn platform, depending upon who you are, you can find various certifications related to your area of interest. And maybe uh, it also makes sense for you to identify what is your area of interest and what is your area of past work and accordingly choose a course that you can get yourself certified on. Krishna, do you see companies already making an effort to launch, uh, you know, policies focused on gig workers because they're a large part of the workforce? And um, I mean, can you call out some of the companies who've already made some progress in this direction? So I think Shilpa, I'm, um, I'm not uh, sure about uh, this uh, tech professional. I think on the blue collar side, there's already of course, a lot of discussion happening. The fact that this NASCOM has taken it up means that a lot of companies are seriously thinking about it. As you know, NASCOM only thinks about companies who are their member, right? The mm-hmm. fact that they are going to the government and representing, I'm sure there's a larger alignment among companies to go that uh, route. But I'm not aware about if somebody already has a rule. I know all, all kinds of companies hire gig workers. They always used to hire. 
like when, my, when i started my first uh, assignment 2010 uh, sorry not even 2000 when i started technified which was my first business way back in 2000 2000 that time also i, I have i had worked as a gig worker for many many people right? my first customer was uh, this person called uh, prashant prakash who runs excel uh, yeah, sure. he used to run a company that time called netcraft So he had hired me to do a lot of work for him. So I'm thinking way back in 2000, also there were, and and it was IT services company hired me for certain role as a gig worker. So, so all kinds of companies had today also companies hire all kind uh, and all kinds of companies are in fact companies of the size of IBM also hires gig worker. But right. will this become more prevalent? I think it also depends upon the policy that government uh, agrees on. Yeah, uh, Shilpa, I'm done now. Um, Any any questions that you have? Let. Uh, no, Sujit. I think yeah, we are yeah. Okay. Thanks. Questions. Thanks so much, Krishna. It was lovely talking to you. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be a huge topic in the coming days. Thanks a lot from Times of India and thanks, Takis. So thanks, Shilpa and uh, Sujit. Thank you. Nice Thank you, Krishna. It was really insightful and thanks so much for that presentation. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us.